Hashtag quiet quitting. Is this a good idea? Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English lesson number 503 on Thursday, September 15th, 2022. Happy Independence Day to JR and all our Mexican listeners today. The full lesson is available at plainenglish.com slash 503. JR uploaded all that last night so that he can take today off to celebrate. Coming up today, every generation thinks it invents slacking off. And Gen Z is no different. The latest TikTok craze is quiet quitting. We'll talk about what that term means and whether it's a good idea or not. The English expression we'll talk about today is above and beyond, and JR has selected a song of the week. Let's get started. If you're on TikTok, or if you read the business news, you may have heard the term quiet quitting. Back in July, a TikTok user named Zaid Khan posted a video in which he said, quiet quitting means not outright quitting your job, but you're quitting the idea of going above and beyond. Khan goes by the TikTok handle Zaid Leplin, possibly a play on his first name, Zaid, and the band Led Zeppelin. Here's what else he said about quiet quitting. You are still performing your duties, but you are no longer subscribing to the hustle culture mentality that work has to be our life. The term quiet quitting has since spread all over social media and has jumped, predictably, into the business world. All the major news and business publications have run stories and videos on the term. And as more people identify with and use the term, it has taken on a variety of meanings. First, though, it's about employees pushing back on the hustle culture against the idea that you have to constantly be working. This is a response to burnout. Even before the COVID-19 pandemic, the boundaries between home and work seemed blurry. During and now after the pandemic, those boundaries seemed to all but disappear. So this first interpretation of quiet quitting is about dialing down the intensity level at work, about not working just to get ahead, about not taking on projects beyond the scope of your job and responsibilities. A lot of people purposely do more work, even if it's not effective, because they think they should. And then others follow the leader, feeling they should answer more emails, take more projects, do more stuff. So quiet quitting is about tapping the brakes on that difficult cycle. It's about not doing more work for no additional pay. It's about not doing pointless work, about not doing work just to get attention and win approval. In many ways, it's about redefining the boundaries that have gotten so blurred over the years. Another interpretation, though, is more cynical. Other people interpret quiet quitting 
as a way to keep a job, but not really exert much effort. For workers who are disengaged or who don't feel a connection to their work, a job is something to be endured. And for many people, quiet quitting is about gradually doing less and less and trying not to get fired. Do the minimum and nothing more is the ethos of some people who are quietly quitting. This is a passive-aggressive move to withdraw from a job without taking any proactive steps to quit or find a better one. You can imagine the reaction of the business world. Kevin O'Leary, a celebrity investor, said he doesn't hire people who are quiet quitting, but he hopes his competitors do. Ariana Huffington said she wants employees to give 100% when they're working, but also set boundaries so they don't get too stressed or burned out. She also pointed out that if one person on a team is quietly quitting, it only makes the problems worse for everyone else. Career coaches have chimed in too. Some say that quiet quitting can be about a missed career opportunity. If you're in a job that's not making you happy, and you just try to get by by doing the minimum, then you're giving up a tremendous opportunity to find something that would make you happy. One more word on this. If you're an employee and you're quietly quitting, just be aware that your employer might be quietly firing you. The opposite side of this coin looks like this. An employer can simply not give a slacking employee a raise, not give interesting projects, and just wait for the employee to quit out of frustration. Wouldn't that just be a waste? If an employee is quietly quitting and their employer is quietly firing them, how long will these two miserable people stay in this working relationship? I'm on board with the first definition about resetting boundaries, about clarifying roles, about stopping this idea that work is unlimited because work is unlimited but valuable work is not. I spent years in a job where there was a lot of performative work being done. People going out of their way to say how much they did over the weekend or on the plane. A lot of that is performance art, and it has this really negative impact down the line where everyone else thinks that they too have to work all the time. The second definition, though, just sounds depressing. Do the minimum to not get fired and hide your laziness and hope not to get caught. That just sounds like a real waste. Today's expression is go above and beyond. That was part of Zaid Khan's original TikTok video on quiet quitting. Do you remember what he said? He said that quiet quitting is about quitting the idea of going above and beyond. To go above and beyond means to give extra effort, usually in a way that exceeds what is expected. 
This is a very common term in human resources. At work, if a manager says that an employee goes above and beyond, that's usually a good thing in the manager's eyes. That usually means the employee has done more than what's in the job description. That the company has a certain set of expectations, and this employee, this person who went above and beyond, exceeded the expectations. The person did more than what was expected or required. Now, the idea of quiet quitting is about not going above and beyond for a job, or at least not always going above and beyond. You can see how this leads to a vicious cycle. If you go above and beyond at work, you'll get recognized and maybe get a nice raise or bonus. But now, what you just did, that's now expected of you. So to go above and beyond again means to do even more. And the cycle repeats itself, and now we have people quietly quitting. However, let's look at it from another perspective. Don't you like it when businesses go above and beyond for you? I have an example. I use a piece of software called ClickUp to manage my work here at Plain English. It really helps me stay organized and prioritize my projects. I'm not even a paying user of ClickUp. I use the free version. But I wrote to customer support with a question about how to use the site. And the support person recorded a screen capture video to answer my question then sent it to me and made sure I understood what the video was saying. And this all happened within half an hour of me sending my question in. That is going above and beyond. I'm a free user. And within half an hour, I had the attention of someone in customer service who recorded her screen showing me how to do something. This is above and beyond because it's more than my expectations. Look, when you're a free user, you expect to probably get a reply to an email, but at least I expected a one or two line response and maybe some links to existing support articles. I don't expect a lot of personal attention. Even as a paying user, I don't always expect that. It's nice when it happens, but I never expect anyone in customer service to record their screen and answer my specific question. But they did that. I click up. They went above and beyond. They exceeded my expectations. So let me ask you a question. Is it possible for companies to go above and beyond for their clients if all their employees are quietly quitting? How can a company go above and beyond for their customers if all their own workers refuse to go above and beyond for the company? And do you want to live in a world in which nobody goes above and beyond. I don't think I want to live in that world. JR's song of the week is Every Breath You Take by The Police. He was at a place called Ravinia here in the Chicago area, It's a nice outdoor performance space with a big picnic area. It's a lot of fun. He was there and he saw Sting 
the lead singer of The Police, who performed this song, Every Breath You Take by The Police, is also part of one of JR's favorite shows, Stranger Things. So that's all for today's Plain English, number 503, for Thursday, September 15th, 2022. No quiet quitting here. We are fully engaged here at Plain English. And a big thank you again to everyone who joined us for our 500th lesson special. If you missed it, or if you want to relive all the fun times, you can check out the replay at plainenglish.com slash 500. We'll be back on Monday, like always, for another great Plain English lesson. See you then.